live. Hello, everyone. I am Tobbs, aka Tasha, I'm Manticore's digital content manager, and today I'm joined by <laughs> the incredible, the illustrious, the very talented Naya Alchemy. Naya, thank you for joining me on Core Live today. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How and are thank you? Thank you very much for having me. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say, um, our tweet went out with the schedule today. This might be the most retweeted uh, core creator spotlight, and everyone was excited to, to have you on here. So I have to say, everyone, thank you for creating such a warm welcome for Naya in chat and in our social uh, media spaces. And let's see, Shockter says, Naya is quiet. Thank you, Shockter. I am going to bump up Naya's audio a little. Let me know how that sounds now. <laughs> That's the first person ever to say that. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, you guys, Naya is an incredible artist. She has great attention to detail. She has a way of bringing scenes um, to life with so much whimsy and care and attention. I'm so excited to dive into some of her work today. Um, and then Shockter posted a smiley face, so I hope that means she sounds good now. And hopefully I sound good too. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump into, I th this might have been the first thing you created in Core. Uh, this is going to be Naya's enchanted uh, cottage scene. And if we uh, spoop on over, hee hee, I'm already in here. Um, <laughs> so I posted the link in chat. Oh, and then I'll, I'll send the link to you too, Naya, if you need it. <laughs> I'm terrified to go in there. <laughs> um, so here we here we are. Oh, I think I see. It. Yep, that's bronze sword. Hey, bronze. Yay. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And oh, bronze says, "Well, I haven't played this one before." Okay, you are in for a treat, friend. Um, so Naya, let's start off with uh, the very beginning. What made you want to create games? Uh, I had been in a car accident. What? Oh my yeah, god! I, had been in a car, I was in a rollover <laughs> car accident that left me super broken. Um, oh at the time, god. I was I had a little art studio. I had a shop at the Ren Fair, a seasonal shop at the Ren Fair that's close to my home, and uh, I was signed as an artist, as a sculptor that was producing fairy figurines and distributing all over the world for me and in magazines and in an instant i lost my identity right? oh um so as you suffer through physical therapy and things like that and learning how to talk and read again oh it my was God. uh it was it was just a really dark and sad place to be and i was sculpting things in mashed potatoes and still trying to do something oh. that felt inherently natural and all I could ever really get to do was was kind of play with what was around me for my own company and sanity. Oh my and, God. Uh, yeah, wow. and I think you know, 3D modeling, I couldn't do the, the, I didn't have the dexterity anymore for sculpting, but I could hold a mouse. And someone had given to me a, a tablet, like a Wacom tablet. And yeah, it was like, if you can't do that, you still have an eye for these other details and things. So you know, kind of pursued that. But I didn't know anything about 3D modeling until the accident or making games and where you could deposit them <laughs> to kind of give yourself back that, um, that, you know, it's just, it's a God-given gift, right? So, Dude, Naya, I have never had <laughs> anyone answer that with such a dramatic and inspiring, uh, yeah, answer. That was incredible. So you actually weren't, really interested in making games until like a few years ago um no it's about 10 years ago oh, now okay. but you know i had that accident very young and it wasn't me that was driving i was a i was a passenger in somebody's mm. car oh. and i got hit by on my side by a parts truck oh so we rolled over a dozen times and i needed to get cut out of a car and you oh just can't imagine how devastating it is in all facets of your life but i was very successful before and art was always the i don't know it was always the joy in the household right yeah so to lose it um and to lose other faculties about you in that time it's very it's just it's a horrible struggle it's a dark place to be because yeah. it's lonely everybody else is 
you know, playing and doing their thing. But I had a very, very vibrant and exciting real world life. I didn't need to be online. Wow. Right? But when it gets taken away because of mobility issues or communication, uh, gaming was the one place that kind of leveled that out for me. And I could play with my friends. I could, you know, make new friends that way. Yeah. So it was, it brought that, it brought that energy back. I felt important or needed, wanted, and there were certainly people I gravitated to because they were just the happy point in my life. I loved playing with them. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Folks with disabilities really benefit tremendously from what online presence can offer them because it doesn't matter at that point anymore. We're all the same, right? Oh my gosh. Wow, so I feel like, um, would it be safe to say that uh, like the scenes you create are just an extension of that like rich inner life you have? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You build what you know, right? Yeah. Okay. The fantasies are nice, but they're still grounded in what you know and are familiar with. And I have to say, the the details you put <laughs> into the scenes, oh, hey, bronze. <laughs> Like if we look right, if we look right here at the stars, like you have put the little pieces of tape that you know you you would have on the stars to hold them up. As so, it should be. Yeah. How how do you like um, think to put in these details? Like, is it just noticing the world around you? I think because I'm trying to duplicate things that make me happy, that I'm pleasantly surprised at. Like, you know, it just looks like crafted care. I certainly could have just hung stars, right? But I wanted it to feel like this is me creating my own world. And some of that would be more of a, you know, afternoon craft stamp book kind of, you know, nonsense. So those details lend itself to that story I'm trying to create for someone. I want them to feel like, oh yeah, yeah, she actually did make this and she's taking care about it like she would in real life. You know, that just yeah. gives it more personality, I think, some character. Oh, truly. And then uh, Shockter in chat says the bat holding the lamp is awesome. And I have to say that is a detail that I also love. Manti. Manti poor person. That's Draco Wolfie's bat. Oh, and right? you and know who made it. Oh, absolutely. I think she's one of the first people I followed uh, oh. from Core that was, you know, putting things out there as CC content for us to deconstruct and learn from. Aww. And that thing's title is called Friend Bat. At one point, I saw Jacob Wolfie <laughs> was like threatening to remove it. And it was like, no, no, don't ever do Aww. that because you can't, there's so much on that, right? It was one of the first animated pieces that I could find. And yeah, it matches to me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I will light the way as friend bet. Of course you will, dear. <laughs> God, and uh, I'm just loaded in again and we're outside oh my oh my god i didn't even notice <gasps> are the these blue the blue fairies yes, yes. Mm -hmm. oh my god i can't like this is so a uh, magical and there's like so many little details to discover and i think that's what i really enjoy about your scenes is the more you look at them um the more you find and i'm just wondering like do you get lost in adding all of these little details like i have to imagine that's the funnest part for you that's mania <laughs> <laughs> that's mania um it's too many details right in some places um but i'm not creating in core uh, for any other purpose than it's just a delight it takes a oh, lot of headache away uh, core is littered with awesome buttons and if you try creating anywhere else you'll fast find that you need a superpower or the learning curve is is a mountain that you may not want to tackle as a hobby. And Core really had done a fantastic job of making it possible to, I don't want to stop creating. That's what I do. I open my eye and I make things, right? But sometimes it's a little bit too big of a struggle and I spend probably an obscene amount of time in Core because it's too fun, you know? And you can experiment without ruining <laughs> whatever you're on about and yeah. yeah the details that come in here you know it's hard because it's kit bashing i'm not used to that um 
Okay, now, well, speaking of what you're used to, um, mm -hmm. so did you have any experience with other game engine, uh, engines or game creation tools before Core? Well, I think I've been doing this about 10 years, so as a 3D generalist, I dabble in many little facets of putting things together, but I prefer 3D, 3ds Max for modeling and animations, Marvelous Designer for, you know, fabrics oh, or soft, wow. soft things, Substance Painter for texturing, World Machine for giant landscapes, wow. and other places like Unity, uh, UE4 is what I was using. Um, but pu open to the public where they have some things already built in. Certainly Sansar, Science Space, SL, um, Spatial OS for hosting and networking game engines. Because um, they're not, you can't build in Spatial, but, you know, it's there to, to network Whoa. them together. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's really, it's really long. And I just keep jumping from one curious point to the next. Because that's the only way that you find what works for you and where you fit in the industry if this is what you want to do for your life but even as a hobbyist you know you have these grand ideas and you want to chase them and you find you don't know so much and you have to understand or at least to come in contact with some of these other components of making games in order to do your part the best so yeah but i like cool <laughs> Like, just, like, distracted by these like gnome people who've appeared oh, in yeah, your world. Oh yeah, they'll chase you. Just, oh, yeah, oof. just get away from them. They're, oh my they're god. naughty. <laughs> <laughs> my god, this is. I'm like, so I um check out you know the games before I um interview the wonderful creators who come on here, but I. I'm just like discovering so many things I've missed on my first and even second time in this world. Oh, this is, yeah, like you've truly nailed down like this sense of like. Yeah, magical they're just discovery. Naughty. They're like naughty dogs. You're just going to have to leave their yard. They'll never leave you alone. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Um, so, Naya, so we're in this beautiful outside world, and we were just uh, inside uh, the cottage. Um, mm -hmm. Do you prefer exteriors or interiors in terms of scene creation? I think I, I most enjoy making props while I'm in core. I'm mm. usually doing characters, like for avatars for VR. Oh, um, oh and, my god! And the outside structures of things, because that's pretty easy to to get through when it's your own, <laughs> when it's your own, and you're not trying to find shapes that you can, you know, disfigure and kind of smash into place and go. That seems to work for now. Um, so I definitely like, you know, collecting my trinkets in core and and making those things that I think. Um, other folks might be able to collect and deposit into their scenes and it gives their room some character that maybe mm, inspires whoever comes through or it just resonates within a guest, right? Like you only need one hero piece in a scene for it to mean something Ooh. to the guest and I want them to leave any of the projects that I've helped um, collaborate on. Um, I oh want them gosh. to leave with some memory, and you're not going to find that if it's just purely catalog, unless your gameplay is really off, the, you know, we go yes. off the charts. But as far as like in rooms and things like that, like it's a story to tell. You know, you're in there as something. Who are you in this game? And I want the pieces to reflect, you know, maybe that that vibe and, and lend itself nicely to the atmosphere of what you know my teammates are trying to create there. Ooh. So I definitely like props and and interior stuff well, well i yeah. totally see it in your work i mean yeah oh yeah these gnomes are my new bffs <laughs> <laughs> they're not escape <laughs> uh i was gonna say speaking of your uh community content pieces that you've you know elected to share with everyone uh let's jump into naya world um <gasps> yay so i'm gonna hold my breath <laughs> yeah so naya world is a world that uh, our intern Josh, uh, aka Spook, uh, aka you may have seen him uh, on his core live debut last Thursday during happy hour, uh, he put together this environment uh, that's just only constructed with Naya alchemy pieces. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's delightful. And then I'm going to share... Um, I'll share his thoughts with everyone uh, as we walk through it. All right, and then here is the link for you guys. Ooh, and then I, I'll send you the link too. Frank. Oh, I see Stay Punny showed up. Hi, Yay! Hey, 
hey, stay punny. And then uh, while we're hanging out on the loading screen, uh, how did you find out about Core? Oh, um, family member. Uh, we had oh. gotten separated. Some of my family is in Japan, the other half is in USA. And I was lonely. I was oh. absolutely like heartbroken, homesick, you know, the whole the whole kit caboodle of it. And how do you reach someone across such a big distance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, someone had said like, oh, you should try that goofy place. And uh, well, what goofy place you're meaning, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, go Second Life, mm -hmm. right? So I had gone to Second Life and run its course there. I only contributed content i wasn't actually there to play with outsiders oh so you were like only a content creator mm -hmm. yeah it's oh. it was too i'm gonna say too old a crowd for me interesting uh, actually they're a little bit older so they have different different things that they're into and i just don't go for it i wasn't looking mm. for other people and i uh, wanted to create easier with people I already knew so someone had said well why don't you try core and well what's core it's kid bashing place and I'm like ah oh, man but then I get here I didn't make it past the fountain before I lost my mind it was so like there was so much happy energy and it felt welcoming I felt like they had built this place for me I ran back to the discord and I'm like everybody get in court and there was about eight of us that came in on the same oh my day God. and just lost our minds in core plaza and we jumped in and out of every one of those little vignettes and we had oh. such a hilarious time because you know they didn't need to be uh, anything other than looking for a happy time with friends Right? You, and that's very hard to find on other platforms. You feel like odd man out until someone's willing to break the ice with you, but not in core. There oh. are players and creators. You bump into fantastic people all over the place. And it, you couldn't help but get smiles in leaving, right? But yeah, Core Plaza really, really did it for me. And I found core because we were searching for places to meet up and, and just play without, you know, constantly having a scoreboard behind us. There were many places to still discover in Core. Yeah, so it just kind of, it sounds like Core was originally Ooh. just, uh, <laughs> or are you in the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, what are you looking at? I'm looking at you crossing the little bridge Ooh. and somebody Ooh. else looks on a wall. Okay, um, I did want to point out, so I think these market stalls might be my favorite creation of yours so uh -oh. i'm so glad josh included <laughs> them in here um Me too, aren't they colorful? yeah and i think mm. you just there's so many things you there. do here <laughs> yeah that are so clever like I, and i've pointed this out in the uh community content countdown stream when you released these but like like this mesh material on the ham is a oh, yeah. chain link fence and then like the scallop, I'm like point, pointing to my screen like you guys can see it. Um, the scalloping uh, here on uh, the stalls is the dragon scales material, just positioned very cleverly. And then um, I believe I just noticed the fish for the first time too. I think the fish material is actually like the rusted iron. It is, it's oh rust. I still fit. It really, did, like, right here, what? it just has, like, this really great rainbow sheen to it that I feel, you know, real fish have. And then, if you guys... My magic material down the aisle a bit. Uh, the magic wood. It's like, it's oh, like the really? magician's wood or oh. something. Yeah, it's purple glowing on something. Oh, that's... Okay, that's the sheen there. Oh, oh the purple, the purple. What's down there? Purple and blue. I think it's the bookcases, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's a laugh, that's a laugh. Yeah, down there. Yep, it's a bookcase. Oh. Okay. Oh, we got all kinds of bits and bobs in there. That's wonderful. Love this. And then like, oh, like. Okay, I recognize some of that. That's in the Western one. <laughs> yeah, you have. Yeah. So this is basically Josh constructed uh, an entire scene with just Naya's medieval stuff, and she has oh. whole other genres, entire sets available on CC. Um, Naya, do you have like a favorite genre you enjoy designing for, or just you know, ideas come to you and you just enjoy exploring them? Oh, I have a cascading amount of things I want to ever make in my life, right? So it never, it never just sticks awesome. to one theme. I basically want to make everything I ever see. <laughs> oh my God. 
Oh, and then I see ooh, one spooky noodle in chat who is intern Josh. He says, I loved oh. working with all your stuff, Naya. You're a very talented artist. Ooh, and Thank then. Thank you. This is so beautiful. And I love where we put the windmill of the path. Right, it looks Josh like did something. a great job. <laughs> like, I want to go up that path and see what I find. And then, oh, here is where you had the heart balloon that uh, I think, I believe AJ is running around with right now. But this yes. was uh, Josh's Why favorite pieces of yours was this um tea set scene and complicated he said, tea set <laughs> yeah he he loved it so much that even he couldn't find a place for it um in the medieval portion of the world but he had to plonk it down here i'm just like look yeah. at all these little details it's yeah oh my I god know, macaroons I could, I could of course <laughs> love i love that the dainty right the dainty so uh when you're starting a project um how how does that even begin you take an idea um a spark happens inspiration comes to you um what's the next step well i like to collaborate with people i really enjoy being part of a team so it's usually not wholly my idea i think when i've ever been approached to uh, collaborate with someone in here it's because <laughs> you know they they know that i'm i'm pretty much always building so i probably have surplus that just matches what their idea already <laughs> is and then we clean it up um to just make it more their style or suit what they need it for so there's that um, most people just give me a shopping list of things that they oh want, and God. there's definitely a lot of pure ref. <laughs> there's oh! a, a program you can get to stick I, mm, I well. uh, literally just downloaded pure ref for yeah, our new segment debuting today. Corlav makes a game. <laughs> Tune in at 3 p.m., people. But we're also still doing a little bit of uh, community content countdown. <laughs> yeah, well, Pure Rep saves all those illustrations or photos and images as like its own little project. Yes. Name, right? So you can always refer back to whatever the initial one was. Awesome. And when you're working in a team, you get all of these shout out requests. And um, that helps because you can get a very good um, energy off of the teammates. You know, what is it they're really looking for? Because they'll start referencing music and movies, or, you know, they find fantastic pictures that they've seen somewhere else, or other games where there's something that they thought was wonderful, but they would want it tweaked in their way. So it's usually not my ideas um, for inspiration or anything like that. It's, it's someone else going like, hey, can you make this crazy thing for me? I've you know, I've got all this I want to put out there, and it's like, hey, I definitely want to help you bring that to life. And uh, it's okay, right? But it's usually not my idea. It's usually someone else's. Gosh, I Inspiration. feel like... Oh, are we sitting? Yeah, we're having a moment up on this Isn't hilltop. Isn't that beautiful? It is. It yeah, is. That's a way better landscape than the one I put in there. I was just like, uh, I don't know what to do. But I have to say, I feel like every... Uh, game dev in chat right now it's like man i wish i had naya alchemy to give like a, a shopping list of my assets too because you do <laughs> such beautiful work oh thank you for the sub sonia very much appreciated and let's see oh the clickety boom says i'm definitely gonna steal some of naya's artwork for my horror game oh my god i would love to see your stuff incorporated into right. something scarier yeah autumn season's coming with all that brings with it so hopefully there's enough for you to find if not go ahead and message me in discord Ooh. there might be something very fun and curious oh my for god. me to lend into isn't this the cutest little town ever i am so glad you <laughs> I love like it i'm seeing it from somebody else's because i'm i'm oh. rotten for it now right <laughs> I'm just like you've done better than me on my own oh my That's gosh great. well yeah shout out to josh for putting this world together and then okay here it's adorable now probably one of my favorite assets of yours uh these chili peppers <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, how the heck did Naya do these? And folks, they are rocks with, uh, I believe, advanced car material on them. I, ju I just, yeah, they look <laughs> so much like dried chili peppers. I can't believe like how well you're able to like command the materials with uh, the provided meshes. Do you have any tips for people like um, looking 
to create uh, props and models? Kit bashing tips, if you will. Kit bashing tips. Um, I'm going to say press all the buttons, change all the materials. Yes. You know, you have to fiddle around with your UVs or um, I guess it's like the composite materials are some of my favorite because you can put your own your own base texture on something and then add to it with something else. So you get these really nice yummy combos and then you can probably get close to what you want. But if you're sticking to like Coors vibe, then everything in the catalog has a multitude of, of ways that you can do it. And you just have to disfigure them, pull them in every direction, mm -hmm. flatten them, mm -hmm. you know, blow them up super big. It's, there's, you just have to play and touch everything in there. Ooh, and as you agree. get more and more familiar with that catalog, some of those shapes will stand out. And then you'll find that like the rocks, okay, so you have the rocks, and then when you make them super tiny, <laughs> uh, and you bend them out of shape, and you turn them in a way, and with the right material, you know, it all is a nice handshake. They complement each other, but you won't discover it if you just take them raw out of the catalog, and you're like, yep, it's a rock. It's like, <laughs> no, but what else can it be? You know, and then you end up with yes. really lively shapes shapes you know exactly. for something that is emulating real life or what you're trying to get across so i would say just yeah push and pull everything touch all the buttons <laughs> and then uh here's carrots that have the birch tree material but turned to orange so another uh creative misuse although i think that's really just what kip ashing is uh, yeah you just are so good at seeing uh the potential in <laughs> the assets and the materials. One of the funniest oh ones God. was when uh, Sino and uh, Captain Plastic had asked me, could I do a snake for the snake game? Right? Oh my God. I was like, oh yeah, I got something for that. And I had only just found tank parts. And I ended up using a piece of the tank to make the head, the head shape. Wait, so you made the snake <laughs> from snake? Yeah. The, oh the my god. Everyone gets. It's tank. It's a piece of tank parts, right? And I was just wow. like, but it reminds me of that little weirdo toy that you get in like, like dime store. You know, like dollar store <laughs> yes. Toy. Yeah. And I was like, what, what is this? Because I just pull items out of the catalog. I don't even read what their description is. <laughs> like car paint. Who knew it was car paint? Me and Blue Clary will always just refer to it as glitter. We, it's not car paint to us, it's just glitter. <laughs> so true. And then, can I just point out, I, once again, another detail that flew under my radar. Um, this little birdhouse with a bird inside attached yeah. to this flower cart. That is just so precious. Oh my god. I like birdhouses. Yeah. And cuckoo clocks, you know, anything that's kind of kooky and weird. Oh, and I'm adorable. like, that's wonderful. Ooh, and then we did have someone redeem hydrate, but with silly SFX. Naya, do you want to make some silly sound effects for me to <laughs> hydrate? You do not to? want me to make the sound effects. Oh for my you gosh, I'm. Well, <laughs> will there be? Will I sustain damage to my computer? <laughs> Water damage. <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm ready. I'm just gonna turn away okay. from anything that could be damaged by liquid. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll tell you what I'm I'm drinking. Okay, um, three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, those are good ones. Those were some Silly. good ones, Naya. There was Why there was some definite. Out of a jar. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> my Nalgene. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know me. I just carry a liter liter round jar around of water. Uh, you know, gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> oh, that was That's wonderful, good. Naya. Thank you. That's wonderful. What's the um, sound effect? And then, uh, Sinnoh says that snake Naya made is iconic. Agreed. So I didn't realize you made the snake. Um, so that means you've collaborated with, um, Team Mantle, uh, Commander yeah, Fu, uh, XR mm -hmm. Studio, uh, some pretty big mm -hmm. names in the core community. Am I missing anyone? Oh, everyone. <laughs> everyone. If, if someone says that they need something, I kind of want to slide in there because networking, uh, you know, if you work outside of core, you will be in a bubble, pretty much. You're just working <laughs> in a bubble. Only in core have I Heck ever. Yeah. Okay, for instance, 
I was in sign space, if I could just mention them for a moment. I was in sign space years ago, won a big contest. I was perfectly aware of who Uncarella is, but I had never spoken to her. What? Big fan of their work, loved them to death, never spoken to them. In oh my court, God. In an instant, the minute she showed up, we were both like, I know you, I know you. You know, and I it was amazing. That. It's a really small world oh if you're God. very active and jumping in and out of social platforms. But that that's just how it is in core. They're very much more approachable and friendly, right? Aww. So yeah, I try and work with everyone to some degree, even if they just ask me for something quick and then I get to, you know, be included somehow and it's not to steal thunder it's just i want to i want to be a part of whatever it is that's going on in core i really really like it here and i don't want people to hesitate to be on teams or <sighs> you know maybe be hesitant to approach me or any of my friends that are in here so the only way that you're going to do that is to keep reaching out to people and be open for them to also work with you and I was just fortunate that, you know, folks from Mantle, when they had the core invitation of the first time around, were like, hey, do you want to join us and make some Heck stuff? And I was yeah. like, do I ever? <laughs> <laughs> and then I just have to point out one detail before we jump into the next Naya game. Um, Josh said he loved working with so much of your stuff, but there was one oh. piece that stood out <laughs> and felt so different from <laughs> everything else. And that was these torture. <laughs> <laughs> torture yeah, chambers cubits. he was like all of her stuff is really wholesome except for these <laughs> so he's like so i had to include them uh <laughs> <I did. laughs> <That's great. laughs> why is that though yeah. in the middle of town I, I hope that's behind. I hope it, that's behind. I will say, it does seem to be a little off to the side. So maybe this is like the... Uh, more, yeah, like uh, warning. Uh, yeah, kind of the more gruesome side of the rougher neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Is anyone allowed... Will we always be able to go here? Yeah. Like, can I... Okay. Oh my gosh, okay, totally, good. yeah. Because I'm like, this is really... <laughs> This is so much prettier than anything I could have possibly put oh, to it. This oh was one God. of the challenge oh. board things, right? High, high so, praise for Josh. Yeah, Josh, do you want to be my new best friend when it comes to putting stuff together? Oh my <laughs> Look gosh. Look at this place. This is beautiful. I don't know what we're going to do here. Oh, Wait, and then... will others be able to download this or is it just a visit? Oh, well, let's see. Um, CCC says it's unlisted, um, but I'm oh, sure... No. Uh, Josh could mark it open for edit and list it um, if you're okay with that, Naya. I would think it was amazing. Ooh, There's probably so okay. much more for all of us to learn because more hands on it, right? There's always tips and tricks and little spots of genius Ooh, yeah. hanging around in other people's work. I'd really be curious to see oh. where it all came. And I want to, you know, I want to poke around, see how you clean stuff up because I'm sure you need it to. <laughs> So uh, before we move on, while we're still on the topic of community content, um, mm -hmm. do you have any like best practices for getting um, your templates noticed in the community or used? Um, yeah, whatever your brand is, you know, make sure that you put that in the title. That I think is maybe the mm -hmm. first and foremost. If you want notice, you want people to be able to come back to you um, or at least figure out how to find all of your work. So make sure that you always put that in the title. I put mine first. It'll always say alchemy and then yes, something else. I've <laughs> like Whatever kooky name I feel like putting in there. Best practices is that. The other thing would be maybe a readme file where you can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I know that the programmers mm -hmm. like to make, you know, super Read me files. <laughs> I will say, except for Commander Fu, and I'm not yeah. just saying that because he writes personal notes to me in all the reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you really need to have a conversation with the folks that collect your things because, you know, in the off chance that they do read it, they get a sense for who you are as a creator. And that is often how I've gotten other people to reach back out to me. They're like, you know, I see what you wrote there. And that was really funny, oh Brian. My God. My dad. You know, things that Aww. just lighten the load on anyone. It might just be a silly read me note in the bottom yeah. of it. And then they're going to come back to you. And it just opens up a more friendly um, chat with someone that, you, in the other case, you wouldn't have known. 
So to get your things noticed, you definitely want to join game jams or participate in anything that has more inclusion than just you working by yourself. Oh, I you love know, you that. want to have that open arms. This is not that kind of platform where you're just, you know, trying to top what the last guy did. You really will stand out the more that you work with others here and be flexible to work with those people so that they can refer you you know, to someone else that they know in the community mm -hmm. that may be looking for someone that needs you. And I feel, you know, CORE is really wonderful about do credit um, spoken. You know, if you've done a great job with your team or on your own to something, you know, it will come up. There are all these little outlets for how CORE shows that they're paying attention. You know, and I'm sure as the community grows, it'll be harder and harder to stand out. So the best that you can do is really make sure that you collaborate with people be friendly wow. be generous with what you know yes you know um but you need to keep talking about it and make the best use of social media that you can i mm. kind of don't like to do it i forget it's always an afterthought but you need to bring the other eyeballs attention to your work mm. and also other game devs you know when you have outsiders from core you know, thumbs up or heart and retweet what it is that you've done, you're gaining some traction and you're showing that you're viable even outside of core. And that looks great to your peers. It can't mm -hmm. not. You're kind of preaching to the choir if you only ever post in core creator discord, right? So you need to show that you are a wanted, important creator, you know, in whatever capacity it is that you're building or, you know, programming in here, you need to use social media and get those other fanfare, you know, you want to do that. But you have to demand that you get credit on things that you've worked on. You have to brand yourself and use social media, work with others. Oh my gosh, okay, I just loaded into... Oh my, you're gonna get, ner you're gonna get nervous in here. Yeah, this is a <laughs> core collapse. Now this is a collaboration you did with XR Studio. And I thought yes. the interesting yes. part about this map was you were taking um, uh, the base is from our it? environment artist, Josh, different from intern Josh, uh, but both very talented people. Um, yeah. So, okay, first of all, I just want to say I freaking love that answer about how to get yourself um, noticed in the community, collaborating with people. Um, I imagine for Second Life, was it pretty similar in terms of um, getting noticed? Because you said you just did yeah. asset creation for them as well. No, it wasn't. It wasn't hard over there at all. Like I said, I was living in Japan, so I had mm. access to wonderful patterns and builds and styles. I had, you know, family. I have family that can translate um, some of the older stuff that uh, they just don't talk like that or or, or use those anymore so some of the language is getting lost as we move through generations but uh, they have many role-playing groups over there Aww. and a lot of them do revolve around historic places or ancient cultures and uh, you had a lot of folks over there just didn't know what was going on so it was like well <laughs> I do so I had <laughs> built my my brand over there by really focusing on what um, there was from you know, different periods in Japan because I had access to it. I had actual access to it. I wasn't I wasn't bluffing or just taking the aesthetics. Like I, I actually know. <laughs> so that makes a difference. And I yeah. could build endless amounts of content that wasn't mm. easily found. Oh yeah, there's some jump scares in this one guys. I yeah, forgot. we don't we don't want to do that. That's that's awful. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so Naya, did you make these no, Monsters? again, Draco Wolfies, I guess it's like Noodle Friend wow. or something like that. I don't really recall what it was. And that wasn't supposed to be part of it. I oh, had what? like six or seven like piles of people and puddles of muck and stuff. And Ooh. I didn't have this map. Jazz oh, my God. Had it. So he's like, he's like, what kind of creatures can you make? And I was like, well, I've got some. Ah. And I'm showing him this line. And he goes, but what's that? And I was like, that's called a mess. And no. And he was like, give it to me. And I was like, no, it's, oh my God. it's just a mess, right? And he goes, yeah, but jump scare. I want that. Give it to me now. And I said, okay. Oh. And there it is. Making, making its appearance over there, doing its job. This was for that uh, spooky game jam that oh, you guys yeah. had. This was the first thing that we participated in. Oh my god! I didn't even know that you could get downloadable 
like maps when he did that. Chaz had a copy of this. I oh. never had a copy of it. It was funny. Oh, no. But this is the map that when I seen it, he's doing a screen share. And I was like, what? That's not core. And he's like, yes, it is. And I'm like, well, oh, what wizard God. made that? <laughs> then as he got more involved, we were like, is that gun parts? Because, you know, the catalog wasn't <gasps> so big at the time, right? Yeah. So I was like, I think most of this place is made out of gun parts. Who knew? <laughs> and that really set that light bulb off. But there was so much we learned um, with him, you know, fiddling around with this map and it was just so beautiful like the lighting and particle effects and just all the atmosphere is as he was turning corners i'm like what's that and what's that and pull that apart let me see you know it was really the thing that made me know that core could really take that big stretch and tap some of what the yummier parts of unreal engine are it Ooh. was this one and i was just like what oh my god that guy is insane we didn't know it was someone from manticore though I probably would have told him, no, don't do it. <laughs> we don't to... want that kind of trouble, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was some wizard that was now lurking in the community, right? Oh, my that gosh. they were taunting us with, look, who really can be something. Um, oh, that's so funny. Wonderful. Just really completely immersive. Right? So what was... Um... I mean, it seems like you're so comfortable collaborating with people. Um, so using somebody else's um, map as a base or foundation probably wasn't that um, difficult or unusual. No. Wow. You're only as good as, you know, what you can put oh, out there. Yeah. And the more minds, the merrier, right? Because they're going to be like, ah, this isn't quite right. Sometimes you have to push away from the table to see the mess you've made. But when you have another set of eyeballs on something, it's it's easier to see them and fix them. It's like play tests. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I just like collaborating with other people. It lightens the load. It doesn't just fall on your shoulders to build the most magnificent place you've ever done. <laughs> you know, it's like um, there's other people there to kind of motivate you and help you along and give you some courage or... You know, their energy, that spark, they get very excited, especially when you work with programmers because it's stuff that they don't do. So they're happy to bring your things to life. It's a really nice handshake when you yeah. can collaborate with others. You get the best, the best, uh, you know, you learn stuff from them. So it's everything. Every time you do that with someone, you pick up more and more good skills on how to better manipulate what you want to do here. Oh, my God. If you want your, your, that image in your head to manifest. Ah. You need to go in that route, right? Like you need to work outside of what you're comfortable with and learn from the folks around you. So oh my I gosh. love collaborating with other yeah, people. Yeah, Naya, I feel and like... And I don't mind using their stuff. <laughs> yeah, you are dropping so much knowledge right now. So it, well, it sounds like... In this like... case, he made us look great, right? I mean, I didn't really add too much to that. I basically ah. only did stuff for on the insides. Okay. He had already done like a phenomenal job it couldn't have been mm -hmm. done better so we we gained a teammate that you know oh whether gosh. wanted to be or not but he had already provided us with such a wonderful base to work on for something like a game jam which has a super you know all the game jams have like the stringent criteria and hard deadlines lightens the load so collaborating and using other people's work is a hundred percent a wonderful thing it's less stress less stress gosh yeah, I can't. So collaborating is not only a great way to get your name out there and get recognition in the community. It's also a great way to learn from others. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah, really like that. Yeah, deconstructing what people that you admire, um, you know, they they're doing things in there you hadn't thought of yet, and it might take you forever, if ever, to discover there was a better way to do it that will get the same thing across. And often, um, less is more in a place Ooh. like Core because of performance and stuff like that. So while I usually take the long hard road to do something because mania and I super focus <laughs> on details of things, you learn how to pull out of it what's unnecessary and keep Whoa. the parts that need to hey. be there in order to give you that same presentation, same, you know, chilly feel in this case, or, you know, in a place like the medieval town, certainly there's things in there that I didn't even think to add. I wouldn't have thought to join those things together. 
but intern Josh did a wonderful job, right? Yay. And now it's even more lively than Aww. I had presented it. And I thought I put a lot in, you know, but there was still more to go. I had lost steam or energy or the deadline came up, you know, but hand it off to someone else and they just keep bringing out the best parts of something. You really oh can't God. ask for better. Oh, I love that answer. Okay, now we have 10 minutes left, so I'm going to jump into the next game. And I have to say this next game could not be uh, more, more different from uh, Core Collapse. That's right, we're jumping into Cookie Cards! A collab nice. between uh, Commander Fu and Naya. So this oh, is nice. um, completely different. This is like super saturated, <laughs> sunny, none of the... Uh, dark horror sci-fi we just saw um i just love your range naya it's it seems like there's no genre or atmosphere you can't um tackle uh in my own way but that's true for any of us right like we're you're interested in just being a part of something right so you always find your limit but you know commander Fu is a super easy manner and a wonderful programmer and Aww. I don't I think he wanted to do like boxing or something we had very different projects that we were independently going to do and he says well why don't we do something together okay what are you going to do now I said I think we're just going to take the framework of that and do little big planets carding <laughs> he's awesome. like what is that and I was like well there's a couple of maps I like a lot so he basically just let me do whatever I wanted and he brought it all to oh life beautifully God. and I think it is it's it's just the right amount of silly but it's cheerful and you know it's not littered with how we were in the, the cottage or on ah. the medieval town or even in core collapse you know where mm -hmm. there's just little details all over the place most people just fly right by where in here it was very you know everything's bigger than life and you know yes. kind of crazy and silly and it's just a good it's just a good time right so yeah commander Fu is funny to work with on this oh my gosh i have to say so you've collaborated with so many different people in the core community i'm sure everyone has their like different style of working together mm -hmm. um do you like enjoy um when you get to collaborate with someone and you have like game design input or is it um easier when you can just like focus on making everything look pretty and not necessarily have to worry about how it'll be implemented like what's your ideal uh collaboration scenario um programmers they they know what the limits are for this platform so you can shout out whatever you want and they'll tell you yes or no, they can, it can be done in the time frame that you're looking at. Not that it can't be done ever, <laughs> but as far as, uh, you know, the mechanics of <clears throat> the mechanics of the game, you know, I start building the assets, you know, it's always the deco parts first and then we find something we think is silly or something that fits perfect and they want to bring it to life. So they're just like, can I have that one first? So the priority list starts getting shaped in that way. And with Commander Fu, you know, we had a Trello board to keep track of oh, things that he that. wanted to see first. And then that was because I had my own list of things I wanted to get on about. But he needed time to bring them to life and certainly polish them up so that they, you know, worked correctly as they should. And so that everything was synced up so players could see each other doing what they were doing at that moment. And, you know, the priority list gets structured a little bit differently when it comes to the actual build for a game that you want to be able to play and not just something to wander through because it looks pretty. But programmers, I rely on them to actually guide me through that. I'm not the leader on those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. it is a team effort. So, it, Truly. you know, you got to leave it to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so I have to ask, um, did you come up with the creation of like, like I love the the jellyfish, the octopus. I hate the teeth guy. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> teeth guy can suck it, but <laughs> I, I enjoy all the other obstacles. <laughs> so yeah, who who came up with these wonderful uh, ideas here? They are they are wholeheartedly gleaned from the game that I like. Oh. So that's not the the way that they appear is just what you can do kind of slapdash in core on a on a pretty tight deadline. But they are they are characters from from the game, just modified to maybe express us a little bit 
better. They're certainly arranged differently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they don't have the same shape, you know, I don't get to model them. So it's not, it's not a carbon copy. It's still my version with Commander Fu on what we were seeing in the game that we thought was what made it delightful to play, you know, and it's a racing game. So you already have some panic on you about trying to win, but what kind of obstacles would make it different than just jumping through hoops of fire or, you know, a ramp out of what makes it more fun than just yep standard issue ramp like i've seen yes. it <laughs> and then so we could be a little bit funny on this map though it's nice uh i see a few different comments in chat uh, a lot of people are saying this game reminds them of little big planet which i totally mm-hmm. see um and then i think someone else said oh the uh, bug's life movie yes oh yeah yeah yes this is all oversized <laughs> yes but cheerful, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shooters and stuff like that. And people definitely want to get that uh, emotional response when they do the horror games and stuff in here. But uh, I kind of like Sunny Side Up. So it was nice to work on a game where that was purely its uh, mood. You know, yes. it's, it's difficult because it's racing, but it was silly the whole way through and crashing into friends and skipping through puddles and you know, finding the VFX that would work so that it didn't look like a train, like with smoke puffs behind it. <laughs> oh, I yeah. think that was something him and I sat there for about two hours, literally touching and manipulating every VFX in the catalog until oh, we yeah. find something that didn't disappear because we're racing, you know, the speed oh, yeah. was something to conquer uh, that you would lose the VFX too suddenly, you know, too soon. So it was this is fun stuff yeah well i have to say you definitely (laughs) nailed the vibe here i mean just looking at it uh, it is so like (laughs) it it feels like a little playground that that we're racing in really it's very imaginative uh and of course the inspiration uh people are taking from it i think i mean little big planet bugs life totally that same whimsical uh feel I'm glad they like it because it was really one of the easiest that we had ever put together. You know, really short time frame. The turnaround time was very quick, so it didn't drone on forever and ever. Right? It was was pretty quick to get through, and he's so brilliant with understanding those different dynamics in core like how could we bring this to life? Or we would see something in the game, in watching you know reviews like those. uh, what is it like streamers and stuff had gone to play yeah. you know then there were other things that he knew could be done in core that he just wanted to put in there and it just made it more lively and a little bit more fun uh than standard issue map and with terrain being an issue when you're racing cars <laughs> we, we knew that we needed to keep the map a little bit on the flat side so we started just using those banks on the side as things to deliberately mess you up you like learn to drive in this space or don't at all yes <laughs> uh, so how do you make a flat map for racing lively right oh, so it was yeah. all it was him bringing all of these things to life and animating them um and definitely the effects like you crash into something and they just explode into like all these little bits and pieces of things so everyone around you can see like up oh, i guess you hit it that time didn't you? <laughs> Ooh. heck yeah and spend your money at vending machines on cosmetics that's I f- right finally have enough for the wheels i want <laughs> <laughs> awesome oh Okay, let's go check out the wheel vending machine. Oh, and I, uh, that, this, uh, we're drawing upon the close of our hour together. I can't believe it's already done. Okay, let's see. So if anyone has any, can I open up questions to you in chat? And if you want to answer any of them, you can. Sure. Okay, if anyone has any last minute uh, questions for Naya, now is the time to ask them. No guarantees they'll get answered, though. I did see Trashy Bird um, said f- Trashy Bird. formal collab request uh, to <laughs> Naya from one Trashy Bird. And I have to say, I would love to see a Trashy Naya collab. A wow. Nya <laughs> collab. <laughs> high five trashy bird you know heck yeah you know that's fine yeah we're kind of buddies and friendly anyway oh so that's a given that's Gosh. a given shout out to trashy for just being a, a, a positive presence in the core community 
Yeah, um, right? Yeah, always a, always a pleasure to see their name in chat or in game, unless they're killing me, but that's, I, I won't <laughs> hold it against them. <laughs> Everyone kills me. <laughs> and Vargle says, Naya, your stuff is always amazing. Thanks for streaming. That's from Vargle Bargle, another talented core creator. Okay, now, uh, Naya, I'm going to end the stream with the hardest question. And I ask this question to every core creator that comes on. This is a toughie. What are your favorite core games? Oh gosh, non <laughs> like ones that core made or? Oh yeah, let's do no Manticore ones and no I, Manticore ones. I usually say no games that you've created yourself. Okay, definitely Hazard Pay, Mordecai and Mika I think me and my friends have the silliest time playing that because you just get destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Cookie Cutter, Nani Moon's Cookie Cutter, because that's that's my yes. deal. Yes. And Candy, yay. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, I really like Ben East games. Anything oh. that Doc B and Noob Dad Gamer does. Now, I yes. did collaborate with them on one. Um but I I like Doc B's um, games. Like they're just off the beaten path, but they're super fun to play with friends. I'm a big fan of multiplayer games, so anything that Doc B does is usually straight up my alley for playing Heck with friends. Yeah. But yeah, maybe hazard pay with Mordecai and Mikasinator, and they often will jump in ah. just to devil you while you're trying to play. Ah. <laughs> and Witch Side and Balloon Simulator, Ben East. Uh, he's really, wow. really super nice, and I've gotten to play with him a couple of times, right? Oh, how lovely. So I'm always just like, get out of here. <laughs> Stop <laughs> my coins. I need it. Um, but which side? You can really learn a lot about the company you keep by playing which side. Truly. You know, it's like a would you rather. Like oh, I love blue. which side. <laughs> yeah, we should, maybe we should play that for one of our uh, happy hours coming up. Uh -huh. oh, incredible. Well, Naya, thank you so much for joining me today. I truly enjoyed just getting to hang out with you and pick your brain about creating in core and um, creating in general. I can't believe, like, I feel, God, the car accident story. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't No, mean no need to apologize. <laughs> I'm just, like, such, to have such a beautiful thing come from something so terrible is really amazing. And, and although it was a, a weird journey, I'm, I'm glad to have you here with us today. Thanks. I appreciate you very much for doing this for all the creators, not Aww. just me. I think, I think there's a lot, a lot that goes into this, and I appreciate it so, so much. And thank Aww. you, Intern Josh. You did a beautiful, yeah, beautiful job. Yeah, Intern Josh. I hope that you do put that out there for others to be able to download because it's wonderful. It's way better, and it's a little sampling of all of the things that I've ever done that are on community content. So it's like one-stop shopping, and it couldn't be presented any better. Really, really loved it. Thanks. All right. And I think with that, uh, we're going to close out the stream. Thank you all for um, <laughs> watching. And then a little birdie told me um, Vargle Bargle might be streaming. How, yes. how does everyone feel about a Vargle Bargle raid? Super good. Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put us on the closing stream, but stay tuned because we're going to raid Vargle Bargle, guys. We're raiding. All right. So don't go away, because we're about to raid. Mm -hmm.